Greetings from Patton Middle School. Welcome to our Unearth It entry. Our team consists of Alexander Nguyen, Kathy Lee, and me, Jennifer Ding. The problem that we're addressing in our local Chester County area is flooding. Flooding is the effect of poor stormwater management, particularly in our case, the Red Clay Creek. This is an issue since flooding often causes road closures, damages to homes and businesses, as well as crops. This leads to financial losses to repair damage and lost crops. There have even been fatalities recorded nationally. Hey, Alexandra, what can we do about this? Thank you, Jennifer. So now that we know our problem, what's our solution? Although there are many different solutions, rain gardens are the absolute best for our situation at Patton. So what is a rain garden? This illustration here perfectly represents a typical rain garden. How does it work? The rainwater or runoff flows down smooth higher ground surfaces like roads into the rain garden or retention basin. Berms around the perimeter of the garden keep in water during heavy rains and floods. Hardy native local plants with deep roots absorb the water and they actually soak in 30% more water than conventional lawns. The remaining water is filtered through a well-draining mix of dirt and is released into native soils. These are the benefits of our rain garden. First of all, it's best fitting for our budget. It's the easiest to implement, taking very little space and causing very few disturbances on school property. It's easy to construct with no plastic or complicated structures. Also, as illustrated, rain gardens can help with even more. Obviously, it helps with reducing flooding, which was our main objective. It also provides habitat for animals such as bees, butterflies, and birds. It filters water and actually removes 90% of chemicals in the soils and 80% of sediments in the water. There's also, finally, an added bonus of a pleasant garden of flowers and plants that can help reduce stress and anxiety. So now that we know our solution, Kathy will tell you how we plan to execute it. Thanks, Alexandra. Now you have introduced what is a rain garden. Here's how we're planning to execute it. The location we consider is behind our school in between the fields. This location could also make our garden a great opportunity to educate the students and the public about the rain gardens. This is, a small, this is a small retention area between the access road and the field. This location already has the shape needed for a rain garden. The advantage of placing it here is that it gains enough sunlight and avoid people stepping on it. The mud along the side has already shown the drainage is an issue here. Here's a list we found useful for choosing the plants in the rain garden on the left. In Unionville, Chesford District, the weather can sometimes reach above 95 degrees in the summer and down to 15 in the winter. It could be raining or dry, depends on the situation. So we need to consider the plants that could tolerate our local weather conditions. Next, it is Jennifer with our summary. Thanks, Kathy. So in summary, our solution is the best since rain gardens will be easy and inexpensive to construct and maintain, reduce runoff, and in turn help our local issue of flooding, make a great habitat for small animals, it'll look nice in our fields, and also help build awareness in our community and possibly inspire others to build their own gardens. Thank you, Ms. Quinn, for assisting us in this project. And thank you, Longwood Gardens, for hosting this great opportunity.